The Black Templars were the first 40k army that I ever collected, and one of the models that was always taken in that force was the Emperor's Champion. This lonesome character, Hunter, would often turn the tide of my battles, taking out an enemy character at a key point, leaving the enemy forces without their buffs, leadership, and a hefty lump of points down. But even though the existing Emperor's Champion miniature was released way back in the early 2000s, it is among the many miniatures that are yet to be updated for the modern game. My name is Pete the Wargamer, and today I'll be showing you how to build a Primaris Emperor's Champion. The majority of the miniature was constructed from a single model found within the Indomitus set, the Judicia, or Judicia, however you want to call it. Now that set was a limited edition release, and at the time of filming this video, this was the only way to get a hold of these miniatures, but I do suspect that they will become available separately, or as part of a stock collecting set in the near future. To begin, I needed to gather myself all the components required to build the Judicia, and once they had all been clipped away from the sprue and cleaned of any mold lines or tabs, I was able to start with the conversion. The Empress Champion is equipped with one of the ten black swords of the Black Templars. Now, there are a whole bunch of two-handed blades available across lots of different kits that I could have used here instead of the flat-tipped Executioner's Blade. However, I wanted to keep the components I used from outside this kit to an absolute minimum, so instead, I decided to cut out my own. I began by measuring 4mm from the tip of the blade, and made a mark on both sides of the blade. This would serve as a marker that I would allow me to ensure that the cuts I made were equal on both sides. I carefully lined up my clippers so at the bottom of the clippers were at the pencil line, and the top was at the centre of the blade creating a diagonal cut between the two points. I clipped away the corner on both sides of the blade, using those pencil marks as a reference. With the corners clipped away, I was able to use a knife and a file to smooth out the cut and to rebuild the blade's edges. The result is one of a more traditional blade shape that can be used to better represent the black sword. The only thing that was left to do was to clip away the tab hanging from the shoulder joint, as I knew I wanted to paint this model as a sub-assembly, keeping the tab in place would have made it difficult to reassemble the model later on. At this point I had my sword and now I needed the rest of my body, so I went about gluing the two halves of the torso together. Now one problem you may get when you're building your models are gaps between two halves like these here. You can fill these in with putty, but I've found that once you've allowed the first layer of plastic glue to dry, you can then go over the join with some more glue. The brush on glue I'm using here is called Plastic Magic, and I'll include a link to it in the description below. This glue will melt the plastic slightly and cause it to lift a little. Leave this a second layer to dry and then run a blade or a file over the area. This will remove that slightly raised bit of plastic, but it will also simultaneously fill in that gap between the two halves. At this point, I have my torso, and as you can see, I was still able to attach my arm sword to the body without that small tab that we removed. But we're going to keep it separate for now, as keeping it separate will make it much easier to paint. Now I still had my left arm to attach, the one holding the giant hourglass, and if you follow the instructions for this model, then the arm should be held out directly in front of the torso. However, I wanted to channel the pose that the original Emperor's Champion had, where his clenched left fist was held down at his side. So, to create this classic look, I went about rotating the arms down. However, I found that the hanging sleeve of the coat hit against the holster that was also at the left side. To fix this, I took away the arm and shaved down the inside of the sleeve with a knife. I didn't need to remove too much here, but I checked the fit a couple of times to fully ensure that the arm could be rotated downwards that extra 45 degrees or so. Again, I didn't glue the arm in place just yet, as I also wanted to keep this separate, not only for painting later, but also for adjusting the pose if necessary. However, I kept it in place to make the few extra steps a little easier. After I'd rotated the arm down, there was no way that the giant hourglass would still fit, which didn't really matter as I wasn't planning on keeping it in place anyway. I used my clippers to very carefully clip away the hourglass, I wanted to keep the chain holding the Indomitus Crusade symbol intact, along with the chain wrapped around the fist. After I'd been able to remove just that hourglass, which quickly found its way into my bits box, I cleaned up the areas that I cut with my knife. Once the hand had been prepped, I could add it to the arm. 
but to keep that similar pose to the old Empress Champion miniature, I decided to rotate the hand so that the palm was facing more towards the leg. The problem this created was a small gap at the wrist. However, this was very easily solved by clipping away a small section of the small push fit rod from the wrist. The hand could then be glued into place with that slight twist to its position. With the hand in place, the chain carrying the symbol just needed to be very carefully bent backwards to better reflect its new position. So, as I already mentioned, I wanted to keep the required parts that are outside the indomitus box to a minimum. Saying that, there were a few components that I needed that had to be taken from the Intercessor sprue. However, as this kit is such a basic one for Primus players, it's very likely you will already have a few of these parts lying around. So, from this kit, I grabbed myself one of the small shoulder pad shields, along with some purity seals and a small reliquy, before cleaning everything up. The first component to attach was a small shield, and this was to be added to the left shoulder. Placing it here not only helped with that Templar appearance I was trying to create, but it also helped to mask the slight gap that I created between the torso and the shoulder pad by rotating the left arm downwards. No extra cutting or trimming was required for this, and the shield could easily be glued into place. The helmet of the Empress Champion is quite distinctive, having much more of a knightly aesthetic to it. Luckily for us, these heads are in good supply within Indomitus. If you're assembling your Primus Captain from the set, you'll be left with at least one of these heads spare. Personally, I went for the fully enclosed head, but if you have some Grey Knight or specific Black Templar heads to hand, then you could use these too. The head I chose had this small tab attached to it, which needed to be removed first. But with a pair of clippers and a sharp knife, I made short work of smoothing out the ball joint of the neck. Depending on how you want to paint this model, you could also keep this part separate, or if you didn't mind, you could just glue it into place now. Now at this stage, my model was about 95% complete. I temporarily attached all the parts to the model to see how they look together, but I was yet to add those purity seals and the reliquy that I took from the intercessor kit. I added these around the model to various points, Having these extra components not only added to that holy aesthetic of the Templars, but also served to add a little extra colour variation to the model when I came to paint it. And with that, I was done. All I was left to do now was to paint and base the miniature, which left me with this. And here we have the fully assembled Black Templar Empress Champion. If you're interested in how I painted and base the sky, there are tutorials either currently in the works or available in the description, depending on when you're watching this. I'm really happy with how this guy came out. I wanted something that could easily be recognized as the Empress Champion on the battlefield. The armor is distinct enough from regular Primus to be passable as the armor of faith. The two-handed blade with a slight trim and a suitable paint job works well as a black sword and the extra additions of the head and shield help to tie him into the Black Tampers more firmly. I'm predicting that the biggest bone of contention about this conversion will be the Judiciar's overcoat. However, the Black Templars are based under the Knights Templar, The Knights were known to wear sleeve garments over their armour, known as surcoats. So while there aren't any existing Black Templar miniatures with this kind of attire, it's not much of a stretch of imagination to see one wearing such an item of clothing. Overall, it was pretty fun to try and limit the number of kits that I sourced my parts from. Sometimes just a few simple tweaks can make all the difference to your model, without the need to spend all that extra time and money sourcing and adjusting components for your needs. So I just want to finish off with a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters and the folks who use my affiliates links. Your help is always greatly appreciated. If you like this video, then check out my other conversion guides and please do consider subscribing. And with that, all I have to say is, Thanks for watching and goodbye.